FSC 3000 Artware in Phoenix Light Startup. This video is going to show you how to set up a basic site with Artware and how to configure Phoenix Light. We're going to do a direct connect to the FSC with the 20-1520-01 RJ45 to DB9F cable and the 75-2030 serial to USB adapter. First we need to find our COM port number for the USB adapter. From the start menu search for device manager. Go to COM ports and right here for the USB serial port it shows you the COM port number. We're going to use COM port 4. You can close device manager and open artware by searching for FSC configuration utility. Check that your COM port number is the same as what was listed in device manager. Here we already have it set for COM4. Baud rate, data bits, parity, and stop bits are all standard. Now we're going to connect to the FSC. Go to connection and click connect. The default password for version 1.12 or higher is hello. Click login. Now we're going to connect to the controller so we know the communication is working. We're now on the site tab. Click the add button on the right to add a new site. Click yes to the com data pop-up. Click yes to disconnect from the controller. You can't create a site while connected to the controller. Click the reset button. Click add one more time to add a new site. Click yes to the com data dialog box. Add the short name and location. We'll leave it the same. Select direct under communications options. Com port 4 and default settings. Now click save. If you want to add more sites, you can click Add and you can create different sites with different connection methods such as TCP IP and then you would need to enter the IP address for the fuel site controller and the port is always 2101. When you're connecting to a site, make sure that you get in touch with the IT department so they can allow access to port 2101 and make the fuel site controller available on the network. Back to site number one. We're going to connect to the controller again. The default password is hello. The first thing we're going to do is set up a pump controller. Click the pump controller tab. Set the controller ID and type. We're using controller ID 1 and type PCT. Make sure to check installed. Now click on pumps. For this example we will set up one pump. By default when you have one PCM you can set up two pumps. With position 1 selected, the position is 1 and we're going to leave pump number as 1. Pump Sentry monitors the pump behavior. If the system sees three consecutive transactions with 0 gallons, the system will realize there's a problem and the system will disable the pump. You will have to access the controller and enable that pump if this happens. We're going to use unleaded. The tank number doesn't really matter. If you know the number for your totalizer, you can enter it here. Max quantity is the max gallons allowed to fuel. We're going to change it to 100. Pulses per unit is determined by your pulser. We will use 1 here where 1 pulse equals 1 gallon. Ignore handle on authorization only applies when you have an AVI system. It doesn't affect the system if you don't have AVI. Timeouts will cancel a transaction after the time is reached. Handle means the handle is still on the hook and there's no fueling. Missing pulses means there's a time between pulses being read. First pulse is the time for removing the handle from the hook until the first pulse is received from fueling. Fueling in minutes is the maximum allowed time of actually fueling. Now pump one is set. Click save. Just to remind you, the settings we are using now are just in the artware program. You need to send the settings to the controller for them to transfer. So even though we're connected, all the settings are still stored on the computer Artware is installed on. Now click the Terminals tab. Terminal ID is set to 1. Terminal type, we have a PV200, so select COPT or PV200. We will leave the default timeouts. Make sure you enable keyboard access. Keyboard length is the maximum digits you can use. 
We want to issue receipts because we have a printer. Limit access to pumps allows you to specify which pumps can be used. If you select this, you can enter the pump numbers below. Click Save. We can take a look at prompts here. We're going to leave them as default. If you wanted to change something like number 8, you could change Petroven to say ABC Oil. You can do that here and then click OK. The header is the top of the receipt. The trailer is for the bottom of the receipt. The read button will read what's on the terminal. We're not going to read anything because we want to send all these settings to the controller. The networks tab is for when the FSC3000 will be processing cards with networks such as ComData, CFN, or credit cards. To add a network, you click add, then you select the network. We're going to use bypass to process credit cards. You will get a merchant ID to enter here, then save it. We're not using any cards. If you click save and don't have the cards flag enabled on your controller, you will get this error. Go to the global settings menu and define card record. Enable your settings here. We will select account number, driver, vehicle, account name, pin numbers, product and quantity restrictions. So we have a pump controller, a pump, a terminal. We're going to send the settings now. Go to the online menu, click send all settings. The warning label states, this will overwrite all FSC3000's configuration information. This will delete card information if it's in the controller. If you want to maintain card information, just click send site settings. This is very important if you don't want to have to reload all the cards back into the system. We have an error that popped up that says it failed to process all commands. This one is related to networks. Our FSC is not set up for networks, so we're not able to send the network data. This is okay. It doesn't affect anything on our site. Now that all settings were sent to the controller, we need to create a new user, set the passwords for the system so we can start the system. Go to online, then terminal, this opens the terminal window. Now type set admin and press 1 and enter to create a user. This will create a user who is not the admin. Set a password for this user. We'll allow this user to see bank cards and this is not a time limited user. Type 4 to set passwords. This will let you change passwords for remote access, partial login, and administrator. We need to change those other passwords or you can't start the system. Once those passwords are changed, type system start to start the system. You need to enter the date and time. Now the system is ready. Type by so you're no longer logged in. From this point forward, you need to log in every time. Close the terminal window and go to the connection menu and click disconnect. Now click connection and connect and log in with the username and password. Go to online and open the terminal again. Type show card sum to show the card summary. We can see that our selected options show here. We're going to add a card manually and do a test transaction to make sure everything is working smoothly before we set up cards in Phoenix Lite. Type insert card. 
Enter in a card number. Select card type. We're selecting single type here. Make sure you press Y so the card is valid and just press enter until the prompt stop. Now we'll do a test transaction. If you type show trans, it'll show the transaction. You can see here card 1234 dispensed nine gallons, so it worked. Type buy, then close the terminal and artware. Open Phoenix Light. Click on the Sites tab. We want to test that Phoenix is communicating with the controller, so click Pull on the top right. If you click Status, you can see when it grabs the transactions. So it works. Now we need to send cards from Phoenix over to the FSC. This part is important. If you have no cards in the controller, you will go to Cards, Card Utilities, Click on the site you want to transfer over and click resend. This only works if you have no cards in the controller. We already had some cards in Phoenix for this site, so we'll send those over now. If there are cards in the controller, you need to click update. Update will send over new cards in Phoenix and add them to the controller. So if you have 10 in the controller and clicked update, it will add these additional cards to the 10 already in the controller. And that's it. You just got a site up and running with a few cards uploaded into the controller.